then you're starting to realize that the actuators of old are not the same as the actuators of new. The moment you take a robot outside of a controlled working environment and start putting it into an environment with people, with external factors that you didn't predict for, then all of a sudden you have to design your actuators very, very differently. You know, you're talking about actuators that can withstand unpredictable collisions, that are inherently safe when they work alongside humans, that are very controllable, and that are able to react very fast to stabilize an inherent unstable system. They're actually, if you're looking at the reducer, they're looking at the complete opposite direction of industrial robots. Industrial robots want high gear ratio so they can make this motor small. Humanoids want low gear ratios so they can have a low reflected inertia to be able to withstand collision events. And they have a low gear ratio, which allows the output to move faster with an input of the motor to stabilize the system. And all of a sudden, when you have to design for a low gear ratio system, your full actuator looks different. You need a bigger motor. And because you have a bigger motor, the system becomes heavier. But since your system also needs to be inherently safe and you need to control it correctly, you have to add an output encoder to the system. You want it to slip as well during a collision event, so you have to add an output clutch. Right. You want to know exactly what's happening on the arm of the robot, well, then you have to add a, a torque sensor on top of that as well. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you realize that the actuators for humanoids are becoming a lot more complex than the actuators for industrial robots. And that's kind of where the Catch-22 comes in. You know, it needs to be cheap. It needs to be sub $100 for an actuator. However, these actuators are becoming more complex than what they're using in industrial robots. So how are they going to solve that? How are they going to bridge that gap? Yeah, you need a different solution. You need an inherently different solution. 